Hi, this is Greg Cook, your Chem 240 instructor. Let's get started with the next video. In Chapter 3, we're going to be discussing alkanes and cycloalkanes. These are hydrocarbons of which all the bonds to the carbons are single bonds. As you can see, hydrocarbons come in many different varieties, and we're going to talk about them in different chapters. As I said, we're going to focus on alkanes in this chapter, in which all of them are single bonds, and the general structure for an alkane, the molecular general formula is CN h 2 n plus 2 that is for every number of carbon atoms there's uh, twice that number plus two hydrogens that make up an alkane uh, and we'll see for alkenes and alkynes we call these unsaturated hydrocarbons because they are lacking some of those hydrogens as well we'll be spending time later talking specifically about another class of, of hydrocarbons called the aromatic hydrocarbons or arenes most hydrocarbons that we utilize on a daily basis to make materials or use for gasoline and things like that come from petroleum, uh, actually from crude oil. It's distilled into the various fractions of alkanes depending on the sizes. So the lightest or smallest of them, you can see those possessing carbons between one and four, I referred to as refinery gases. That is methane and butane and propane, things like that, that we know that are gases at uh, atmospheric pressure and temperature. Um, light gasolines and then naphtha, these are hydrocarbons between uh, 5 to 12 carbon lengths in their chains and they have various boiling points. Um, this is what we utilize for fuel in our automobiles, uh, mostly for gasoline. Um, and of course those can be further refined the term octane actually refers to the energy of gasoline, but it has reference directly to the energy provided by an octane molecule, which is a carbon alkane of eight carbons. Um, higher ones are kerosenes or uh, even higher gas oils. You can see their boiling points are much higher, and we'll talk a little bit about the properties of alkanes later. So let's talk about the simplest of alkanes, the linear alkanes. They are essentially carbon chains with the rest of the bonds made up of hydrogens. And the smallest of these is the alkane of one carbon, which we call methane. Uh, you're familiar with methane. It's a gas. It's actually what it, natural gas is made of, and we burn it for fuel in our homes. It's piped into our homes throughout the town, um, and it has four hydrogens and one carbon. So it's one carbon with four hydrogens, and as we talked about in the previous chapter, this has a tetrahedral shape, so CH4, the simplest of the alkanes. One of the things we're going to be doing in this chapter is talking about nomenclature, or how we name molecules. And so it's, it is important to put these, uh, these particular names into your head at this point. These are the first ten alkanes where we have one carbon, two carbons, three carbons, four carbons, etc. until we get to C10. Uh, and their names are methane, ethane, propane, butane, and then we go basically by the, um, the Greek uh, prefixes which tell us the number. So pentane, pent refers to five, hexane, hex is six, heptane, hept is seven, octane, oct is eight, nonane, uh, this is 9, and decane, that refers to 10. And you'll notice that all these alkanes that I've drawn in the condensed formulas here all have the molecular formula, general molecular formula of CnH2n plus 2. That is, for every carbon atom, the number of hydrogens is twice that plus 2. So for C4, it's 2 times 4, which would be 8, plus 2 equals 10 hydrogens. And you can see when we bond them together, uh, we go from methane, which has four hydrogens, and if you think about the next molecule down, ethane, one of the bonds is between carbons. So each carbon only has three bonds to hydrogen. So ethane molecule uh, looks like this, C2H6, uh, and so on. So for every carbon you add in between here, in, in, in lengthening the chain, adds one carbon and two hydrogens to it. So uh, propane would be CH3 on the end, and then a CH2, and then a CH3 on the other end. That's propane right here. 
Well, hydrocarbons and alkanes can also be branched. There's no rule that says that those carbons just have to be connected in a straight line. As a matter of fact, they can be branched in many different ways, and they can even join end to end to become ring molecules, like this six-membered ring or this five-membered ring, and even much more complex structures like this uh, polycyclic system where you can see there are, there are carbons that are fused together to form joining rings. All of these are carbons. And, uh, of course, in these line structures, the hydrogens aren't listed here, but you can add the number of hydrogens to make four bonds to each of those carbons. Uh, so it's important to recognize the shapes and structure and property differences for branched and cyclic alkanes. Now, I would also point out that for the branched alkanes where we have not formed any rings, the general formula of CNH2N plus 2 still holds, no matter if you have branching or not. However, if you have to bring the ends together of a molecule um, to make a ring, that requires the loss of two hydrogens, actually, because if you have a two ends of a chain that each have three hydrogens on it, and then you want to make a new carbon-carbon bond between them, say, for example, take this CH3 and join it with that CH3 on the other end, uh, you have to remove a hydrogen from each one in order to form the ring bond. So the general formula for a cyclic alkane actually is CNH2N because we have to lose two hydrogens in order to form that ring. Now with branching, we can describe branched compounds in many different ways. And of course, putting the branch in different places, you can have the exact same number of atoms, the same number of carbons, the same number of hydrogens, but have them connected in different ways. Those are what we refer to as isomers. And so we're going to talk a little bit about constitutional isomers here in a moment. The way they're connected would be their constitution. Uh, and a little bit of description about alkyl groups. That is, how do we talk about or describe or use um, terminology to refer to a smaller subset of a molecule that's attached to a larger molecule. That's what we refer to as an alkyl group, an alkane portion attached to a larger molecule. So let's take a look at those linear alkanes again for a moment. If you think about uh, just a string of carbons, methane, uh, ethane, propane, butane, uh, pentane, hexane, and so on. Um, you can see those are just connected in a linear fashion. However, if you take something that's a little bit larger than, uh, say, three carbons, anything from four carbons on higher can have various different isomers associated with branching. So we can take a carbon off the end and branch it in the middle, for example. Those are two different molecules. If you see on this slide, we can again talk about linear alkanes, sometimes also referred to as normal alkanes. So you'll see the term N or normal being used for those. And branched alkanes, where some of the carbons are attached as branches off of the main chain. One example of that, which uh, also talks about the difference in isomers, is the butane molecule. So if we have four carbons, the alkane general formula is C4H10. Uh, and in a linear fashion, if you connect all the carbons in a linear way, you would have a structure like this, what we refer to as butane, or sometimes if we're distinguishing it from something else, the normal butane, C4H10. Okay. Now, let's take uh, this CH3 off the end, put one of those hydrogens um, uh, from here onto that end, and then move this one onto the middle carbon. That would give us an isomer of butane, which we is often referred to commonly as isobutane, because it's an isomer of butane. Notice it has the same formula, C4H10. It has the same number and kind of atoms. They're just connected in different ways, and they're different molecules, and they have different physical properties. For example, the boiling points. The boiling point for isobutane is lower than the boiling point for normal butane. So they are not the same molecule, but they have the exact same molecular formula. So they are what we refer to as constitutional isomers. The relationship between them are as constitutional isomers. As we increase the number of carbons, the number of possible combinations of isomers also exists. So here you can see um, isomers of hexane, C6H14 is the molecular formula and the linear normal hexane would look like this where all the carbons are connected in a row. 
So if we just take one carbon off the end, okay, and then put that onto a branch position, there's actually multiple places we could put it. If we put it on the second carbon, that would give this constitutional isomer, where we have a methyl group in the two position, and the, the remainder of the chain has five carbons. Uh, but if we put that methyl group instead of at this position, we put it at this position, that would give us a different molecule. That would put the methyl group here, where now the methyl group that we've moved off the end is in the three position. It's on the third carbon. And that's a different molecule. Those are not equal. That's a different molecule than the putting the methyl group in the two position. So those are constitutional isomers. Um, so far we've identified three constitutional isomers. Uh, if you take this methyl group off the end and put it in this position, well that would give you the exact same molecule as the two position because it's symmetric in this direction and that direction. Okay, so you have to be careful about that. Uh, you can make the identical same molecule if you put it here or here. Okay, but there are more isomers available for hexane. For example, uh, if you take this compound with the methyl group on the 2 position, let me clear this for you so it makes it easier. If you take this compound with the methyl group on the 2 position, take off another carbon and move it, you can put this into different places. You can put it in this position, which would give us this molecule. That's a fourth constitutional isomer, different than the other three. Or you could take that carbon on the end and move it to this position, which would put the methyl group right there, and that is also another isomer that is not identical to that one. Okay, and I think what you'll find is if you try to take any other examples of these where we've taken off a carbon and put it somewhere, it, it makes some molecule that is identical to one of these five. So hexane can form five different isomers. Here's an exercise for you. Draw all of the isomers, constitutional isomers, possible for the pentane molecule. How do you go about solving a problem like this? Well, the first thing to do is draw the normal pentane. That is five carbons in a row. And I'm going to use line structures to do this. So one, uh, one, two, three, four, five. That's the pentane isomer. Okay. If I take one of those carbons off the end, so chop that off and move it, I, then I have four carbons left, there's four carbons, and I can put that group on the two position, and I'm going to use a different color to show the group I moved. So there's the, the branch, so that carbon was moved to the two position. Okay. What if I were to draw that instead um, and put it in the other position here? In fact, these are identical. It's just that it, we can look at it as one, two, three, four. So the methyl group is on the two position. Uh, in this case, looking at it from the other direction, it's symmetric. So the methyl group is on the two position. Okay, so those are not different isomers. Is there another possibility for isomers? Well, yes, there is. Uh, starting from the first isomer that we generated, take another carbon off the end and move it to the branching position in the middle. That would give us a third constitutional isomer, which would look like this. And I should have labeled that as blue for you to be consistent. That would be like this. Okay? That's also C5H12, if you count all that up, but it's clearly a different molecule than the other two you'll find that there are no other possible combinations of connecting the carbon skeleton that would come up with a different molecule than any of these three. So you notice when we were showing the previous examples, when we had four carbons or butane, we were able to make butane and isobutane. There are two possible isomers of butane. Pentane has three possible isomers. Hexane has five possible isomers that we saw. And so uh, carbon four, carbon five, carbon six, those are the examples that we looked at. Uh, you can see that the number of possible isomers increases exponentially as you increase the number of carbons in the chain. There are just that many more possible statistical combinations that would end up to be different isomers. And this grows very, very rapidly. So by the time we get up to 10 carbons, decane, 
there are 75 different isomers of decane that one could come up with if you arrange that carbon skeleton in different ways. Uh, perhaps I should assign that as a homework assignment. Uh, if you go up to 40 carbons, you can see that there's 62 trillion, over 62 trillion possible combinations. So the number of organic molecules that are different that you could actually make relatively simply just from alkane hydrocarbons is enormously large. Okay, when we start to talk about having uh, gr branching off of alkanes, we need to refer to those groups as an alkyl group. And you heard me use the term methyl as opposed to methane. A methyl group is a one carbon group hanging off or branched off of a larger molecule. This alkyl group we refer to is talking about branches and historically that name comes from some of the inorganic or uh, more common naming system. So for example if we look at chloromethane, that's this molecule, chloro methane is the name for that molecule. Commonly this is often referred to as methyl chloride, which refers to a methyl alkyl group attached to chlorine as the main compound or chloride. Uh, the same thing if we think about alcohol as the main, uh, main functional group or main molecule, there's an ethyl group attached to that alcohol. That's a common name. The actual name is ethanol. Okay, and we're going to talk about those naming of functional groups a little bit later. Again, you can do this with various butane isomers, and once you start to put other substituents on, like chlorine, um, that group that's attached, uh, we can c consider that alkyl group in many different ways. So if it's attached at the end of a linear chain of four carbons, we call that a normal butyl group, or n-butyl, as you can see here. Um, if we haven't changed the carbon skeleton, but this is still a side chain or a branching off of a main molecule, and the chlorine is attached to the second carbon, we refer to that as sec or secondary butyl. We'll talk about secondary and tertiary in a little bit. Um, <clears throat> if you have now the carbon skeleton branch, there are two different isomers of where you could put the chlorine as well. And so this we would refer to as an isobutyl group on the chloride. And if it's attached in the middle, we refer to this as a tert butyl or tertiary butyl group on the chloride. But this illustrates the point that if you're using alkanes as a substituent, we refer to them as alkyl groups. And you can see that as a butyl or methyl, or depending on the size of the carbons, it could be a propyl or pentyl or cyclohexyl or things like that. So this YL ending simply refers to the fact that it's a substituent off of a larger molecule. Well, I mentioned we can talk about the, the secondary and tertiary, and as a matter of fact, this is referring to the degree of substitution of a carbon in an alkyl group. So when we think about um, uh, carbons, you can have any number of different carbons attached to it. So R here refers to any carbon group. It could be anything. It's a generic term for the rest of an organic molecule like an alkyl or whatever. So R is a carbon that's directly attached and if that carbon, the carbon we're referring to is on the end, it's attached to only one other carbon, we refer to that as a primary carbon. Okay, as opposed to the secondary carbon where the, there are two carbons attached to the one in question here. The one I've indicated with the arrow is what we refer to as a secondary carbon indicated by a two prime symbol, or a two uh, degree symbol. Okay, and if, um, if it's attached to three different carbons, the carbon in question we refer to as a tertiary carbon. And this is similar to the tertiary butyl chloride that we talked about, because tertiary butyl chloride had three different carbons attached to the central carbon where the chlorine is attached. So that's why it's a tertiary butyl chloride, because the chlorine is attached to a butane isomer where the carbon it's attached to is a tertiary carbon. It's attached to three other carbons. Um, and if you have a carbon that's attached only to other carbons or four different carbons, we refer to, refer to that as a quaternary carbon. So the degree of substitution of an alkyl group uh, it does impact reactivity, and so we have this terminology to refer to it so we can discuss these groups and sometimes use them in our naming as we saw previously.